Hey, hey, what's up? It's, uh, it's Lenny Schmidt. Uh, welcome to uh, Lenny Schmidt's Quarantine Comedy. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Um, this is a show where we talk to uh, artists who have devoted their lives to an art that suddenly has uh, been disappeared or taken away from them, and you get to catch up with them. First of all, do me a favor, please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a lot. It helps me to keep putting videos up uh, on a regular basis. Um, today, I went, I took a shower, I, I put on a good shirt, I ironed it, pull, pulled out the pretty camera, I put on pants uh, to come here and uh, do a new intro. And I just want to let you know that the L, here at the LCQC, I think that's what it is, yeah, Lenny Schmidt's Quarantine Comedy, uh, we talked to all kinds of artists, uh, performers, entertainers, in the, the professionals in the entertainment business, singers, songwriters, dancers, tons of comedians. Uh, actors, screenwriters, uh, authors, casting people, agents, managers, tech, sound technicians, lighting people, all kinds of professionals that work in entertainment specifically and even more so live entertainment who no longer have an opportunity to perform uh, their art or their skill, the craft they spilled, spent over 30 years uh, building. So if you, you get to watch the show and you get to catch up with them and they show you how they've reinvented their careers a little bit, how they're, what they're doing now, what they changed. Uh, to get around the COVID curve law, uh, so to speak. And uh, you guys get a chance to catch up with them and see where you can find out about their information, find out about their websites, maybe go to their Venmo, buy some merch. They get to keep in touch with their fan base. It's a win-win for everybody, if you think about it. Um, I get to do the show. Uh, I'm here uh, every Monday and Wednesday, 6 o'clock Pacific, streaming live on YouTube. Uh, and then afterwards, the show stays up on YouTube forever and becomes a podcast uh, a day later. So... So there you go. And uh, we are sponsored by no one. We have no sponsors, no commercials. You don't have to worry about any of that. We are, we are supported solely by you guys, the fans, supporters, and the, uh, the artists that watch the show on a regular basis. If you feel like you would like to support the show in any way, shape, or form, please uh, go to any one of the options uh, listed right there above, if I taped this correctly. It should be right up there. Uh, if not, if you just go to LennySchmidt.com slash if you can, there's a number of different options there that you can support the show financially. There's Venmo, Cash App, um, the website. You can go PayPal, credit card, anything you can do. Any amount you can give at all to support the show so that I can support the artist will help everyone. Uh, and if you enjoy all the content I produce online, there's this show. There's the Reconnecting Comedy. There's a lot of content. I've put up over 200 hours of content uh, on the Internet over the last uh, few, over the last year. Uh, you can join the Patreon page as well. Go to Patreon, search Lenny Schmidt Comedy, and uh, you get all kinds of ways to support me and my online uh, endeavors. Uh, so that's all. So check out the sh check out the show. My light just went out, so that means that, that means I gotta go. Uh, enjoy enjoy the show. Bam, bam, bam. Hey, it's me. Look, Lenny Schmidt. Hey, LennySchmidt.com. And this is uh, Lenny Schmidt's Quarantine Comedy. Look at that. See the graphics? Very cool. What's up, everyone? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being here. It is a Wednesday uh, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. If you're on the East Coast, it's late. If you're on the West, well, it's nighttime anywhere you go, really. Uh, I hope things are going well for all of you. Thank you for tuning in again. Um, what, what, I don't know what there's not a lot going on. I'm checking the news. Oh, here's a funny story. This, I'm going to tell a story because this happened last night. Uh, I was out doing the Uber Eats, which I do at night. Uh, and uh, I was driving around. Uh, hang on. I'm looking for something. Lost it. Trouble. Chaos. 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 Um, I was driving around. I was going to pick up food at a faux place up in uh, Reseda. And I was driving in the parking lot. And I see the faux place off in the distance. And I'm driving there, and I'm going, uh, going, to the, going, heading for it, and uh, everything's fine. I'm clicking along, and all of a sudden, I just hear <laughs> this loud noise, and the car stops moving. And I'm like, "Oh man, that's not, that can't be, that can't be good." And then I'm teetering. I'm like, 
I drove up on a median. I didn't even see it. It was like a, it was like a eight inch or twelve inch uh, curb that I hit, and my front end flew up and flew down. So the car was stuck. The wheels weren't touching, and I'm, I'm just, I'm like wobbling back and forth in the middle. Last night at uh, nine o'clock, and uh, people come over to try to help me. Uh, really bad help, by the way. Some guy just started sticking like wood and metal under the car. And he's like, this, I can, and one guy tried to lift it. Was, I'll lift it. I go, you can't lift this car, dude. And then eight guys from the faux place came out and just told me to back up, and which would have been, or told me just to drive over it, which would have completely tore my muffler out. Uh, I tell the story because I'm an idiot. And I sat around for an hour in my car waiting for AAA to show up. And people would drive by, and I would just wave as the car was teetering back and forth. And people would, would laugh at me. So that was my night last night. That's the that's what I had going last night. So that was my evening. I hope you guys have had a better evening last night than me. I wanted to mention this before oh, a couple things before we get going on the show. I put this on the uh, on the page earlier today. Uh, Thea Stefan, who was on the show not too long ago, a very talented actress out of New York City, is going to be on a, a, a really cool production of Julius Caesar done in 1930s radio style episodes. Like, you can catch it on the internet. You can go to uh, all the information is on the Lenny Schmidt Quarantine Comedy. It's right here. It's called uh, Shakespeare uh, Shakespeare at, so let's take a look what it's called, Shakespeare uh, at Home. So you can listen to Shakespeare at Home and catch the episodes. That's kind of cool. It's going to be like a radio show, but it's Julius Caesar. And uh, Thea is going to be on, and she's playing uh, uh, Cal, Calfurnia. Calfurnia, is that how you pronounce it? I am not uh, uh, educated. So uh, I'm guessing it's Cal. I'm going to call it California. She knows she's very she's great. She knows every play. She's read them all. She's just very, you know, she's a trained actress. She doesn't mess around. She's a professional. Me, I'm a guy that tells dick jokes in a club. That's what I do. Uh, and now on the Internet, that's what I am. So so there you go. So I highly recommend you go to the website, check all that stuff out. Uh, or go to the Facebook page. Everything's on the Facebook page. My The Quarantine Comedy Facebook page. You can see a link. And uh, check it out. It sounds pretty cool. I'm going to see it. And I love her work, so I'm looking forward to seeing that um, as well. Uh, News-wise, not a lot going on in the news. Well, there's a few things going on in the news. We have a new Senate majority leader. I'm sure many of you are very happy about that, but that was made official today. Uh, uh, Chuck Schumer is now the Senate majority leader. He's no longer Mitch McConnell. So there'll be different jokes coming out next week. There won't be any old man jokes or coffin jokes or anything like that. Or how evil Mitch McConnell is. Uh, well, though will, but he's not majority leader anymore, so he's going to be kind of powerless. It's kind of funny that he has no power because uh, you know he's a dick. Anyway, so it'll be it'll be fun to enjoy and watch that. Also, uh, two things I wanted to point out: the shaman guy that got arrested in the uh, and he's in jail for uh, remember the guy that rushed the Capitol. He was wearing the horns and he was wearing the thing. He was also depicted in an earlier Simpsons episode, which is another. Case of them getting history correct. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Got the thing? Yeah, they're feeding him organic food. Uh, I heard that they were going to do this, uh, but they're doing it for sure because his health is deteriorating. So they had to get him organic food. I don't even know how to respond to that. How does that... Would you get that in prison? You know what I mean? I, when, I, when I was in... Okay, I was in prison, but when I was in county jail, you got a, a, a cheese sandwich and an apple. That's what you got. And a hard-boiled egg. That's and there were no I couldn't go. Hey, are these organic? How is he getting this kind of treatment? How is that happening? Is that what happens in prison nowadays? Anyway, I guess he's whittling away or whittling away, whittling away, windling away. One other news story I found that was really funny and interesting that I can't, I can't get over is that there's a teacher in San Francisco that says that Bernie Sanders wearing mittens at the inauguration is the epitome of uh, white privilege uh, because uh, it gave. The impression that white men can wear whatever they want and not feel stupid. And uh, you can't do that. If you're, if, you're brown, if you're black or brown, you have to dress up and you, now you feel inferior to that. This is taking uh, white privilege to the, to the dumbest level. I think they jumped the shark now. I really, I really I think they do. Because here's the thing. That's old man privilege. Does anybody have a grandfather out there? Did, did you notice they wear odd socks and sandals and uh, mittens on their feet sometimes? They don't care. When you're old, you don't give a shit. I don't give a shit now. You know what I mean? I've been locked up for a year. I walk, I go to the store wearing a robe. I don't care. You know? It's got nothing to do with being, uh, uh, it's got nothing to do with being, plus, there's some young people in my neighborhood that dress like shit. That's all I'm saying. So, Bernie Sanders, 
uh, dressing like that. That's an old man thing. That's what I think. That's what I'm saying. Uh, wow, we have a lot of viewers today, man. Holy cow. I hope I didn't uh, scare them all away. Let's go. Let's say hello to everyone, man. Uh, the usual suspects are here. Ben Magley's here from Wisconsin. Uh, wow. Oh, by the way, if you're back east, uh, hang in there, man. I heard you got uh, Chicago got two feet of snow, a foot of snow, foot of snow. There's a lot of snow back there. I feel bad for you. It's cold here. It's like 70. Ooh. Um. The Mulligans are here. Rachel Zimmerman is here. Of course, I knew she would be here because uh, uh, our guest, of course, everyone's here to see our guest, Pam. Mike Garcia is here. Uh, Lori Solanka, thank you very much for tuning in before you go to work. I appreciate that. Uh, I didn't kill an Uber Eats customer, Vince. I killed no one. Uh, I did. I almost wrecked my car, though. Uh, blue cup. Vegan prison food. That could be possible. Cheese is not a luxury in prison. There was a time when there was cheese everywhere. Remember the government cheese? That's what we got. It was leftover government. It's all white. It's all the same color. It's not colored cheese. You would ask them, what kind of cheese is this? And they would go, white. And that, that was it. There was no, there was no uh, debating. Um, and, oh, look, Julia is even on the message board. She's much better than me. I can't do both at once. Uh, 20, it's 20 in Florida? That's really too bad. All right, man. We got lots of people here. Everybody's here. Guys, like the video. Do me that. I like the video. I'm looking. It looks like I'm the only one that liked the video. That doesn't seem very cool. We got lots of viewers. Guys, like the video. Helps me out, man. Everybody click the like button. Smash the thumb button, as they say. And let's get the show rolling. Let's get it moving. Folks, our guest today, you all know her. You know who she is. She's uh, been on the show three times. That is the second most times. The only other time, the only other person that's been here more than her is my brother. Okay? So... That makes sense if you think about it. She's the only guest that's been here. This is her third time. She's fantastic. She's uh, she's an author. She's very funny. She's very uh, lovely, talented, funny, awesome, and a matchmaker. And we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff about life and relationships and just surviving during the pandemic. This is one of my favorite episodes to do. Please give it up for my good friend, the one and only. Here she comes, Julia Bendis. There she is. Look, yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on again. This look is at, so awesome. Thanks I for being it. here. You look so lovely. Look at you. You're all pretty with the little trees oh. in the background. You know, I got this green screen. I look stale. You yeah. look all like you look you just like you look at you and it's like, oh, and you look at me and it's like, it's just it's a different no, I was view. Gonna say, you look like you lost weight. You I have lost weight. It. You know how I'm doing? Look, yeah. here's how I'm losing the weight. Honestly, is uh, I do the I do the Uber Eats at night. And I get hungry from driving food all night long. And I used to stop and get street tacos or uh, get uh, something fast like a McRib. I love the McRib. Uh, so I would get something to eat. And I stopped doing that a couple of weeks ago. Now I bring I bring I got almonds and bananas with me there and uh, some soup and some healthy, yeah. a lot of healthy food and tons of nuts and stuff. So I eat very healthy at night and drink a lot of water. Yeah. So, Good for you. yeah, I'm surprised because yeah, all I do is. Thank you. I feel great. It's weird. I'm not exercising barely that much, but uh, it's I'm weird. Not... I feel great. It's weird. <laughs> it is. I mean, I'm like, that's what happens, right? That's what's supposed to happen, you know? Yeah, but, I guess. Yeah, I that's great. Turn your volume up. Yeah, there we go. I love it. I love it. No, you're looking good. And, you know, I was just thinking today that it, it's so funny because for men, you just kind of roll out of bed and maybe put a hat on or something for women. This is like a half a day event. Yeah, right. And I was joking yeah. earlier, some people like, am I the only one that takes a shower to get on a Zoom call? Because we're so programmed, you know, take a right. shower, smell good. I even put perfume on. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why? <laughs> That's, uh, no, I, but my daughters are the same way because they do the Zoom school. So they're like, they, they get ready for, hours they, they, get ready, they get ready for school. There's certain wow. days where they don't have to be on camera, so they won't do it. But then uh, when days when they have to be on camera, they're getting up, they're up getting ready. I'm like, you know, you're just on Zoom. And they're like, Dad, everyone's going to yeah. see me. And I'm like, all right, okay, yeah. fine. So, oh, and that so goes funny. for, that's not okay. just Zoom. That's anytime, I always know, the girls hate that. When we go somewhere, I'm like, we got to leave at 6. And I start getting ready at like 5.50, you know? And they're, and they're oh, yeah. they need like an hour <laughs> and a half. And I'm like, what's the big deal? But I'm like, all right, I get it. I get it. Talk I know me, for me today, I was like, oh, okay, it's 3.30. I better start getting ready. And my 15-year-old's <laughs> like, what? what? What the hell are you doing in there? I'm like, I don't know. Just in case I don't like my hair, then I have to redo it, you know? <laughs> you, you give yourself redo time? That's professional. That's that's really yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, I told you, I'm so, I'm very anal. But when it comes to stuff like that, when my clients show up late, 
even five minutes, it drives me insane. Really? Drives me absolutely insane. Oh, you're one of those got to be on time? Oh, man. that's Oh, okay. yeah. The, yeah. The, only, the only thing I've done on time forever is, is this show. Literally. I'm almost always late. You know my plan? Usually, well, here's how I get around the being late thing. I plan to be somewhere an hour early no matter what I do. Yeah, there I'm you like, go. And that for the, even, even the show, I make sure it's set up. I set it up in the morning and then I get, I'm at five o'clock, I'm in front of the computer and I'm ready to go at five or, or I try yeah. to be. So that usually means 535. You know what I'm saying? So, so then I can yeah, hit six. No, I mean, so I it's guess. It's a little trick. Yeah. It, you gotta I'm tricking it. myself. That's how it. sad it is. I'm tricking myself. Yeah. Well, I think with my parents too, the way we were raised, you know, with, I think any immigrant parents or, I don't know if it's Russian parents or just immigrant parents, you know, whenever we had to be somewhere, it was like, we're leaving the night before. I mean, I'm sure that's like all, all people are, all, old people are like that. You just got to leave at like three in the morning for like a noon flight, you know? <laughs> so I'm, I'm used to it. I'm just used to now I get my kids up like five hours before we have to be somewhere. Right. So I'm just so used to it. And it's funny. I think my parents or my dad is listening right now or watching. I actually asked him if he wanted to join for a few minutes. So he goes, eh, I don't know. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have him on. Is he at the house there? Or is he? Is he? Is he there? No. No. I was gonna go to his house and do oh. it from there and say, "Hey, Vlad, oh, you want to? You know, you want to show up?" He's like, eh. yeah. "He doesn't get excited for a lot of things." You know, I think it's just kind of like how Russian parents are, Russian people yeah. in general. You know, I wrote a book, Dad. I wrote a book. Oh, you wrote the book. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Good. Okay. You wrote the book. <laughs> like moving on. But I think Next. that's an. I think it's an Eastern European thing because my ex in laws were Croatian, and uh, that's right. They grew up during the Croatian right at the when this when they became when the whole right before the the police action the war in Croatia. Oh, yeah. they, so and they had family involved early on. So you know they have yeah. I think that's an Eastern European thing because they they were never impressed about stuff. You know because they no, lived a life. No. They lived a real life. You know what I mean? Like I look at what we're going through now. And granted, COVID's been pretty shitty, and there's a Nothing. lot. Yeah, right. I, I, for us, this is brutal, but for them. You know, they think about there's a generation that's been through World War Two. If you were here, the Depression, you know, uh, the, the Vietnam. Communism. Yeah, there's yeah. all these things that they went through. Right. And we just went through bad Wi-Fi. That's what we're dealing with right now. It's occasional bad <laughs> Wi-Fi. You know, it's funny because when they make jokes and not just my dad, I think anyone that's Eastern European and I know they make jokes. And, you know, sometimes you kind of have to take a moment and go, oh, that was a joke. Oh, oh, okay. Because they do with a straight face. <laughs> they do. They it's, that stone, <laughs> it's that stone static look they used to make in the old pictures where everybody in the pictures just was very, well, your book is uh, No Smiling Allowed. Exactly. Yeah, Where's right. my book? Cool. Yeah, there you go. Good call. Too, yeah, smooth. So nice segue, too, by the way. Look how you I'm like. Too, look I'm how you calm. Like totally I, I like how you calmly back this into your book. That's very classy, very smooth. Oh, by the, the way, my book is No book. Smiling Allowed. <laughs> yeah well you know i gotta slip that in there but it was so funny because i was uh I'm, I'm with my parents at their house and my brother got them um what is that thing that you talk to it and it plays music alexa alexa, alexa right, right. Is that, it's really and um, i don't know <laughs> what's not, that thing I'm called so what's that thing house? called you know that thing you know, I texted you 15 times today. Where do I go on? And what time do I go on? Do I download yeah. something? What are we doing? There's I'm something new. Technologically but I'm watching as my parents are struggling to communicate to Alexa and give her commands. And in my head, I'm thinking there needs to be Alexa for immigrants because she doesn't understand the accent. You know, right, the so dial, my, the infl right, exactly. She's just not getting it. He's like, Alexa, stop. And she's like, say it again. Alexa, stop, or whatever she's saying. You do a better Russian accent than I do. And then she's playing, and then Alexa plays a song, like, playing Alexa, stop, now, live, from Croatia. The, it, he's like, no, exactly. I said stop, playing more, Alexa, stop. No, stop, stop, stop. Okay. They need one for immigrants and for different, you know, accents. And it's it was hysterical because, and I, I didn't want to step in. I just wanted to see what happens. Then my mom tries, and she's got a softer Russian accent, but she tries to tell Alexa, volume down, but they keep saying other things instead of volume down or no, No, I think they kept saying volume down, and she didn't understand with their accent, volume down. I'm like, mom, just say off, off, so the whole thing shuts down. Right, <laughs> you know? right. And they're like, no, we just want it lower. 
it, it was the funniest thing. I'm thinking somebody needs to come up with this Alexa for immigrants and you put in where you're from. So it knows your accent. Don't they, they don't have, do they have a Alexa over overseas, like in Eastern in Croatia and Russia and stuff? Couldn't you no, do Alexa yeah. Russian? Couldn't they speak Russian? Oh, they probably could, right? Yeah. That would be easy. If you program yeah, your Alexa see, to program, uh, we didn't to listen think to about Russian. that. See, well, I, I saw problems. That's what I do. <laughs> there you go. I should have just asked you. you it would have been easy. My like, dad already it's, broken. It's easier than the accent. You're like, it's, you're like, let's skip the whole accent thing. Just go right to the actual language. Just give it. It yeah. was hysterical. It, it was so funny. But you know, I mean, at least they're using bit more technology than I am. So. That's a plus. Well, I don't want Alexa in my house. I'm surprised they have Alexa in their house. I got to. I'm actually really shocked that they are too, because my dad is all about conspiracy yeah, theories no. and yeah. all of that. Yeah, my yeah. exes. You know what he my my in laws were the same way. They were worried about well, like we said, they grew up in a time where, you know, everything mm -hmm. was taken away from them. You know, we, we, you know, it was a different time. The government was listening. Yeah, to everything. Yeah, to everything. Yeah, so. Yeah, so they the whole uh uh my the my ex they're afraid of everything. They won't do nothing, you know. It took forever yeah. to get them on texting, but now you can't get them off texting. I I'm I was very surprised, maybe because my brother got it for them, and you know he, he they kind of listened to him more. But it was it was really funny because what he told me after having it for a couple of days, he goes, you know, Alexa, know that that I'm a Jew. I'm like, well, how how does Alexa know you're a Jew? Did you tell her no? I said, call my daughter. And she, I don't know why that sounded from Boston, my daughter. Um, Where are your parents said, from exactly? They have four different accents. It's very confusing. I can't do the right Russian accent. I don't know how I did the audio book because apparently I did get a pretty good accent in my in my book. But so he keeps asking her to call my daughter and, he, and she pulls up a Old Testament Bible verse or something. He goes, she knows I'm a Jew. I'm like, no, I think he's going to understand you. So he pulled up a Bible or verse or whatever. He's like, no, 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 she knows. They know. I'm yeah, like, well, then get rid of it. Don't yeah, get rid of don't it. Well, well, I, think, yeah. I think what you have, you can't get rid of it. It's always there. You can't just get rid of Alexa. Once Alexa's in your house, she doesn't leave. Because she's in all your devices. Right. right? Right. It's like that movie, remember? Forget what it's called. I'm so bad with names. But there was yeah. a thing. It was in his phone. He followed him into the other phone. Do you remember? He broke it. It's a little kid, that actor. I'm going to Google it while we're talking. Okay. There, there's a movie. Maybe your listeners will know. Come on, guys. Okay. You know. I'm looking at the board. Which about. one? Who is Tyler? Is one of the boys? Is Tyler one of the boys? Yeah, Tyler, we, we dropped him off at college last week. That was weekend. the one. I saw the yeah. pictures on Facebook. He's watching, and he said uh, the only things that grandpa, uh, grandpa likes are vodka and pickles. Is that correct? Would that be... <laughs> Pretty much. I could hang with your dad. That I sounds mean, pretty cool. I could do that. I love vodka and pickles. I'm a big fan of both. Do you know what the sad part is? He's no, not nothing. allowed to have either. Why? 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 <laughs> Fuck that. He's an old he's man. Not... Let him do what he wants to do. He's lived a hard life. Let him eat the pickles and drink the vodka. He's got gout and he can't drink alcohol, <laughs> especially vodka. <laughs> so he's like, here, you try it and tell me what it tastes like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My grandmother well, used to drink scotch fun. and she was supposed to, she wasn't supposed to drink scotch. And uh, my mom would take it from her all the time. And when I would come over, she would tell me she always had, had a bottle hidden. She wouldn't tell anybody where it was. But me, I knew where it was. It was back in the top behind the stove. I would grab it for her and pour her half a scotch. And she goes, I'm drinking my scotch. I don't give a shit. And she just drank. Sounds it. familiar. Yeah. Well, Sounds you know, familiar. why not let him? Well, maybe he wants to it. limp around. Let him limp around for a while. If it's vodka, it's, he's lived a long life, man. You got to let him do what he wants to do. He's not that old. Okay. <laughs> he's probably listening. He's like, how old do you see thinks I am? <laughs> Any, I've lived a long life. I don't care. You get to a certain age, you want to drink vodka and eat pickles. You should be able to do it, even if it causes your feet to swell. Oh, it's it's not a pretty disease. It's not whatever you call it. It's terrible. Yeah, but I don't know. My my parents are funny. I mean, they're they're really hysterical and they, you know, it's Every time I'm with them, I feel like somebody should have a camera and always recording them because you just wouldn't believe the way they talk, the way they are. They're, they can have, they should have their own TV show, you know, just like a reality show. They're just constantly following them around the house because it's hysterical. And now I look in the corner and I see this big black thing. It looks like I have a penis in front of me, but it's not. I wasn't going to bring it up. I wasn't going to bring it up, but you brought it up. 
No one's commented on the penis yet. Goes there. That's uh, usually uh, that's usually Keith Runyon's department to step in and say something. He's already said something about Russian porn. Let me take a look. Did at the he? Board. Oh, yeah. Is, is there a difference? No. Is there a what? A difference? Is there a, a Russian... difference between American and Russian? I mean, I can imagine it's uh, no, more they ethnic. Just, actually, in Russian, they just use the Russian language, so you don't have to deal with the accent. So it's not confusing at all. You know what I mean? You just don't pay attention. Right, right, right. And I don't know if you know this, really, when it comes to the porn, you don't really pay attention to the words so much. Any language can be interpreted pretty oh, much really? the same thing. Now, it's always the same. Really? Where's your husband? Okay. He's not here. Really? And you're like, you can get that in any <laughs> language. Really? I'll do some research next time. Yeah, do some research. I'll send you some links. I got some stuff. I'll send you a couple of... I'll send you some well, links. you know what kind I like, so send me that. I will. Send, yeah, I, got, I, got, I can find some of that for you. That's not a problem. Um, yeah, there's some. There's a lot of people on here. Who's Keith uh, Yazdens, Yazdensa? Seda? Yazden, oh, Yaz... I want to hear you say that. What? I love Keith. Okay, I don't he's know who he's... He's a friend of mine. Wait, he's here. Where is he? Yeah, he's awesome. He's in the finance department, department, industry. I don't I don't really know what he does. I don't really understand it because finances and me are like, you know, but he's a cool yeah. dude. He's a young guy. I try to set him up. Yeah. Um, all the people, all the women wanted him, and then he went and got himself a girlfriend, and now oh, he's there off you the go. Oh, you suck, Keith. <laughs> there you go. He went on. I was going to set him up with all my single women. Are you, well, now he's got, I guess he's got a girlfriend. Well, he's here watching the show. How cool is that? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, been, it's totally cool. All right. Gar says I'm a porn expert. Yeah, you have a lot of viewers here. Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Tammy Mulligan is buying your audio book. Yay. There you go. We just oh, made an audio. Great. Tammy's Thank one of my you. supporters. Yeah, they love you, man. They, they uh, love they love you. So how's the quarantine going now? You here. you left. You left. I got because I, you left Orange County and went up north and then Toronto came back to Orange County. Yeah, we we kind of stayed, you know, in Central California for a little bit. We thought we really like we would like it there, but um, we didn't. Uh, we really didn't really like it out there. <laughs> it was very rural. Yeah. Um, and actually, Rachel's parents live not too far from where we were staying. Um, and we just kind of want to try some different. Everyone's working from home. You know, kids are working from school. Kids are working from school. Mm -hmm. Kids are working from home, doing school from home. I can't talk. See, it's past my bedtime. Like by now, I'm usually I have no voice. I can't talk after a day of talking with people. I have no brain cells left. Six thirty um, past but, your bedtime. Oh, I'm on my pajamas and in bed <laughs> by seven, eight. I'm not asleep, but yeah, I'm. My brain is gone by six o'clock, you know, because I'm talking to people all day long. All right. I'm helping people with online dating, which is a whole other subject. I mean, that's, whew, you know, that's. How's that I don't going? Know how do How's it going now during the uh, the the whole COVID? How is online dating working during COVID? That's almost. Oh, I Honestly, I think it's worse than it was before because people now are lonely, horny, yeah. and sick of being stuck in the house. Yeah. So it just, anything goes. I feel like people just threw all the rules out the window and they're just kind of doing their own thing. You know, people don't even bother to write full sentences. It's just like, hey, and let's see if she responds. The people are lazy, but at the same time, they're just over it all. They're over the quarantine, they're over yeah. pandemic. They just they just don't care anymore. Yeah. But it's pretty bad. I mean, I you know I log into my clients' accounts and I try to help them. I'm just like, really, you decided to go with that? Like this was your first message to this woman. Like this was your first attempt to get her to respond to you. Like yo, <laughs> literally, just yo. <laughs> Is, Let's is, see what happens. Does it work? Does it ever work? Does your work? Not with my clients. I'm like, mm -hmm. pass, pass, keep going. Don't even respond. Oh, you're coaching people not to take the yo. I got it. All right. I oh, yeah. I mean, come on. Like, you know, you got to try a little bit more than that. I mean, give them something. How about yo Anything. lady? Oh, there was that. There was that. Yo pretty lady. <laughs> yo pretty lady. That's hey, a little compliment. And, uh, you know, a little compliment to greeting. Yo pretty lady. Uh, People are just really lazy, you know, they're yeah. really lazy and then they wonder why they're still single. And I mean, I really I'm still writing my confessions of a matchmaker book because that's going to be. Yeah, that, I'm really throwing everybody under the bus. You, you know? Yeah. Are you well, you're not going to name names? You're going to make up names. You can't you can't sell out uh, Keith here. 
You guys, you know, you got to no, make up a name. No. You got to call him Kenny or something. Funny names. You got to have exactly. Yeah, yeah. you got to have a list of fake names. Oh yeah, I know. And then I get confused because I keep calling this thing like five different people, Kevin or Steve. You know, so yeah, I need new names. But it's just, and then you know, by eight, nine, ten o'clock at night, I'm getting these texts from people like, "Hey, I found you online." Uh huh. Like texting me, just random texting me. Um, so That's the whole time. Telling, I'm like, where did they find me online? So then I start thinking, do I have an online account somewhere? Yeah. Like, what am I? I'm like, wait, are you interested in my services? Yeah. Well, maybe Tell they're con- careful. You got to be more clear about that, first of all. And uh, maybe they're well, confused on how the whole matchmaking thing works. You know what I mean? Because right? then you're, and you're yeah. like, are you interested in my service? Absolutely. I am interested in your services. I've been locked up for like <laughs> right. a year. What can you provide now, for me? I can provide a lot. This can go on. This can be <laughs> misread a lot of ways. <laughs> I know. It's just ridiculous. One of them, this, this woman was texting me last night and she's like, you know, I've never done this before. I don't understand how this works. And this was after I sent her a long ass text telling her where to go, what to do, what to fill out. Sends me the same text. I don't know what to do. I'm like, you know what? If you can't click this link and right. fill out a form, and do what I just told you to do, and you continue to tell me this, and we're, we're, we're done. And then at the end of it, she goes, um, what's your name? <laughs> you came to me. Yeah. You saw my website, matchbyjulia.com, and you're texting me, asking me where my name is. I'm like, this is why you're single. Yeah. We're done. Well, I, do, I don't know if it could be why they're single, but they're lazy. You're, you're right that everybody's lazy what? now everybody's lazy i do like when i do even when i do the show and have guests i send them there's a one page uh, letter i send everyone which uh, Mm -hmm. and you've been on it three times so you got it but you read you read it early on people won't read the page and they'll call me 10 minutes before the show and they go what am i supposed to do and i go did you read anything i sent you a whole page explaining what it's so simple it's actually very easy but if i have to do it in four minutes before the show it's then suddenly it's difficult but people are yeah. lazy and they don't read. Well, and that's in, I think that's we've been trained, and that's all it's product. Let's practice this internet. People just read sound bites and captions and oh, clickbait. Yeah. That's it. And you Head read lines. one line. Yeah, that's you it. read one line and you figure it out from there. And you go, oh well, that's all I got to do. And you didn't go. Did you read the third paragraph? No. Why? What's in the third well, paragraph? Right. Do you think it's just American people, or do you think that's how other people, like the people that you've worked with before, do you find that it's just pretty much United States kind of thing, or it's all over the world? Because I think it's. I think. Well, I think it's from other countries for younger people, because younger people across the world yeah. are all into the social media and phones and apps and stuff now older generations from across i mean they, you know you know if you again eastern european if it was you know if your father was locked in a closet somewhere and had to eat he could make a sandwich somehow you know what i mean he could figure what? it out i mean old they that For generation sure. just figured out how to solve problems and here sure. our generation yeah. just complains our generation reads one line and then bitches well where's the food yeah. well did you read the whole yeah. the whole thing or not no i just read sandwich here read instructions that's it yeah and yeah. You, you didn't do anything i agree i think you're right it's certain age it really is certain age because clients of mine that are whether they're american or not whether they were born here or not uh, are definitely a lot different they they do the work they listen they're a lot more open-minded they're a lot more easygoing but to me those are all red flags and the more people keep doing these things the more i realize you know i don't want to work with you i just don't so i have to come up with an excuse because you know i don't want to get sued so like i don't want to tell them that well you know you're a trump supporter so i don't want to help you um although i want to say that or you know you're just an ass and I don't want to help you. You know, um, the other day I actually did, you heard this new thing, Clubhouse? I, oh. I literally just heard about it the other day. Yes. Uh, yeah. The girls mentioned it to me. Yeah. The girls meaning your daughters. I right? think so. Right. Wait, what, what is it? <laughs> okay. So this is the, I one of those know party what things where they have a party or something. That's what I thought. So all these matchmakers keep sending me invitations. Join my clubhouse. Join my clubhouse. I'm like, what the what what are we doing? Like, what is happening? My clubhouse? Like, I, I had no idea what they were talking about. I finally went on there and it's just audio. So think of like 
um, what we're doing here, but it's just audio, it's just people talking, others joining, you can follow people, you can talk to celebrities, you can watch, listen to them playing video games. It's bizarre, it's whatever, but it's in beta stages, so they're right. not fully operational. Right, right. So you need, you need to be invited by someone. So I tried it and I stumbled upon these matchmakers I know um, and other experts doing um, a thing about uh, narcissists. Okay. So, which was very fascinating to me because I, I usually can tell people that come to me that are narcissists or have those, you know, key elements in their personality and I try to stay away from them. So I tuned in and then they started asking me questions. And it was very interesting because I realized I'm not the only one that tries to stay away from those type of people, even though they come to me and seeking my help, but, and they need the help. But from what they're saying is that long story short, these people will never change. Okay. So I have to find a way of how to let them down easy because telling a narcissist that I want to work with you because you're a narcissist is not going to go over well, apparently, but that's what I've been doing. You know, you're doing this, 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 and that wrong. I don't want to work with you. I can't do that. <laughs> well, can you put in your, in your, on your mission statement or whatever on your website, a little, little an asterisk and then at the bottom say, uh, narcissist not allowed or I, or like a no shirt, no shoes, no service. You know what I mean? Like if you're a narcissist then I have the right to refuse you service, can you throw it on there? Cause then it's right there on the front page. And if you then at the well, end, I do have something like that, but also one of them actually had a great idea, set them up with another narcissist and they will be good together. I thought, Oh my God, I never even thought yeah, about that. It's a pattern thing. If, if it's they'll never fight. Cause they'll never think, you know, the other one is wrong. They'll just be talking about themselves the entire time. Yeah. So I'm like, wow. Okay. I'm going to try that next time. Never thought of that. <laughs> Maybe you should have a separate whole narcissist page. Like a narcissist, right? a narcissist Tinder. You specifically a dating for narcissists. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> narcissists only. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's going to be a whole other conversation, I'm sure, because that, <laughs> that's not fun. I would, love but, see, you know, I, I, I would love to see how many people would actually sign up for that. <laughs> actually, okay. Narcissist, well, NarcissistOnly.com, that's totally me. <laughs> that's, exactly. Well, and that's the thing, why there are so many is this expert was talking about why there are so many out there is because they never go to get help. They don't think there's anything wrong well, with them. Well, they don't them. think anything so wrong, right, yeah. They never go to a therapist. They never go to try and figure things out. They just either end up alone or ruining one relationship after another, which is, you know, kind of fascinating to me. I'm like, that's a, that's an interesting way of going about life. You know, just always I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm good. You know, I guess that's what Trump kind of is. But, you know. Well, uh, well, uh, well, <laughs> well, Trump also barreled through. That also was a technique with Trump. He was kind of that's how he bullied his way through business through his whole career. Was he just made a decision and think, kept going? You know what I mean? He's I, kind I of a bully. Part of that. Oh, he's definitely a narcissist too, though. He's one hundred percent a narcissist. Because you can say anything. Yeah. He because he come on. He got in Twitter fights with Alec Baldwin. That makes no sense from a president. You know what I mean? That's insane to me. So stupid. Just yeah. so stupid. But you know what's so nice is that like I don't I don't watch the news anymore. I don't listen to anything because it just seems like okay the adults are back. Everybody back in in the office, you know, running the country, the, the babysitter is gone. And I keep telling it, I was saying this the other day to my husband, I'm like, okay, daddy's back in the office. Everything's good. He's like, you got to stop calling him daddy. <laughs> you keep referring yeah, to the old guy. Oh, the old guy. Um, I didn't even care who it was as long as it wasn't Trump. And he's like, you got to stop calling him daddy. I'm like, but that's kind of how it feels like your father's, you know, in charge now. And you, it's, everything's going to be okay. Dad's home. You know, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> we'll see. I don't I'm know waiting why. for see the honeymoon to die on all of that. Hold on. I know. I Gar know. says Gar Garcia. Gar says a narcissist will see themselves as a perfectionist. That's 100 percent correct. Narcissists right. will never think they're a narcissist. Also, I was going to mention this when you're when you're talking about narcissists. I think the only time a narcissist would make any type of change would be if he's in a relationship with someone. The relationship is in danger or it's not working out and they're trying and he goes to counseling or he tries to fix it and he, he physically makes a there's got to be another person going you're a fucking narcissist and you need to do something yeah. and he's got to go yeah I need to change and he's got to be willing to like any change only happens right. if you're willing to make it 
Well, you would think, but most of the times that doesn't happen, unfortunately. And no, you're you know, right. they, what I always say is that people really don't change. They just kind of change their behavior for a little while just to appease you. But I don't believe that people change. I really don't. And my husband and I argue about this all the time because he thinks people do. And I said, no, no, they don't. I mean, there's so many examples of it in life. But you're right. You really have to want it. You have to want to change yeah. in whatever aspect of your life. So well, it's just... I see. It's I think I, th I think people change, but they have to want to change. Like I changed a lot after my divorce, but it was only because uh, two years of therapy and dozens of self help books and actual re real reflection. Real th therapy only works if you you do the painful part. You know what I mean? Like if you're honest, right. if you go into therapy and you're really honest, you go, "I'm really fucked up. And I got to I got to change." And those people, so right. I think you can change. And I've, I've known people to change. And I've seen lots of people make the effort to change. But it's just hard to do. And the older you get, the harder it gets. You know, it's impossible Whoa. for you to come out of that pattern when you're older. That's why. Right. That, that's the thing. Because you, you're totally different when, you know, I, I'm a completely different person than I was when, in my, when I was in my 20s and 30s. You know, a completely different person. So I think we grow as well. Yeah. And it, well, you yeah, really need to learn you learn more. I mean, you learn. You get, yeah, you definitely grow and you get learn more and you get older. But you're right. You got to want to do it. That's the thing with narcissists. Most of them are, are alone, so they never mm -hmm. it never registers with them that there's an issue. Even if they're alone, they're like, well, well every, everybody else is crazy. You know what I mean? They don't think right. it's them. Exactly. <laughs> and so, that's when you exactly. look at someone and go, dude, how many time? How many years do you want to? Is so everyone's wrong but you. You know, I love that statement. It's always my favorite. It's like, so everyone in the world is right. wrong but you. Yes, absolutely. I'm I'm one hundred percent correct. Right, right. They all do something that is wrong that makes you do what you do, right? It's yeah. kind of like the abuser, you know. Well, yeah. I beat you because you made me beat you. Yeah, you there's know? a well I said that because you made it. Yeah, there's you a reason. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't have done that if you right. you didn't blah blah blah. Right. 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 It, it, it's, it's unbelievable. But and it's interesting because now you talk about that asterisk on my website of people who I will not work with anymore. I think attorneys got to be on that list as well, because I have had way too many attorneys where I feel like they treat everybody the way they treat people in the courtroom. So they try to kind of talk their way through everything. Yeah. I had one guy who literally went through probably 20 women in amount of three months. 20 women and i don't even guarantee that many people but he found something wrong with each of them i don't know if he was a narcissist or not but you know now when i see someone's an attorney i'm kind of like hmm i don't know <laughs> do well, i want to go down that road again most of them always think they're smarter than you most of the attorneys that oh, i do 100 and they'll argue shit that don't even understand you know what i mean oh yeah They'll, they'll you know what's so funny is I had sorry not to interrupt no, you. I talk a lot. No, my my dad even no. told me, he, you know my. That's my why you're here. It's so great me. when you're here because I can just sit here and watch you talk. <laughs> I talk way too much. You That's gotta cut me off. Just cut me no, off. No, keep going. You know? No, we're just fine. Stop. Go, go. But I got new shit. Every time I hit this move right here, I go get a sandwich. Every single time I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> you know, I was wondering what's <laughs> happening there. I'm trying to be more. Trying to be more professional. Productive. Production. Okay. Productive. Okay. Multitasking. No, but my dad told me the other day, he's like, you know, I, I listened to all your interviews and they're good. You good. You good. But you need to go somewhere that will teach you how to uh how how do you say, you know, uh finish your sentences. <laughs> he's like, you don't you don't ever finish. You need somebody to teach you how to finish a sentence and be done. You know, like <laughs> Russian. Done. Like, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> And I went, okay, so now I go back and I listen to my interviews. I'm like, do I really do that? I mean, I know I tend to go on and on and on, but he's like, yeah, you need to be done. Like you say you're done, you're done. Stop talking. Okay. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? No. I was talking about the lawyers. Yeah. What was the I talking you're talking about the lawyers. Oh, yeah, yeah. You say you Funny took part. them, you want to take them off your page. Because you had yeah, a guy yeah. that went through 20 women. He went through 20 women. There was another attorney who actually came to me and um, he was really, really sweet guy, cute guy. I really wanted to help him. And he was telling me how um, he, oh, he changed my whole sign up form. You know, I have an intake form where people fill out their name, what they're looking for, everything, their profession, what they do. 
and he changed it for me and he sent me a new one. He goes, here, I think this will be better for your business. I'm like, wait, I'm sorry, what? He's like, yeah, I didn't like your form, so I changed it for you. Here, you can use this for free. <laughs> I'm going, what the, what is wrong with you? I mean, this is why you're still, he's probably still single. That was like 10 years ago. And then every time there was, there was some feedback from a female, from a woman he went out with, he was like, well, no, let's talk about this because I don't see it that way. She said, you kiss like a frog, but you don't see it that way. You suck your tongue in her mouth for a very long time. And she asked you to take it out, but that's not how I see it. That didn't happen that way. I'm like, so no more attorneys like we're done it, it's done well, it's that, over that's a narcissist for sure <laughs> that guy's a narcissist for sure right? if he's you, like i held my tongue in there for just long enough so you can't like, explain, no that was too long if you're defending kissing you're in a bad place you know what i mean if you're defending your kiss you don't defend a kiss that's the dumbest thing i've ever heard in my life you either kiss good or you Everything. don't kiss good and then uh you yeah. adjust so you know the bad thing is he's probably kid he, well obviously he's kissed shitty like that his whole life you know, he didn't just forget how right. to kiss one day. You know what I mean? So every other relationship, right. as long as he's been around, he's actually thought, I don't know what's wrong with all these women. I kiss fantastic. Yeah, you I know. know. Well, see, and that's the problem. And I always talk about this, that who really teaches people how to do these things or how to date or how to kiss or, you know, I mean, it, it's, I do as much as I can with my kids, but, you know, you don't want to teach them certain things that yeah that was, a weird, that was a weird way you brought that sentence out right there you, you know, know what i mean you're talking yeah, about I, kissing you're like well i teach them as much as i can but <laughs> it was a whole you know what i mean weird, i know what I you mean just, wife, I know. the worst the worst thing would be if a wife ever comes to me and says you know your, your son's a lousy lover and it's like well i mean is it really my fault like are we really supposed to teach him that how hard are the father supposed to teach him? Like, I don't know. Is it's that, really sad. That's got to be. See, uh, that's interesting because I think there would be a conversation that the the guy would have with his father, father, right? You think? Or the father yeah. would have with. Because I can't imagine me having that conversation with my daughters. Any type of conversation like, like that. Here's right, but here's the other thing. Yeah. If you if the father's terrible in bed, and he gives him see, the it same could be a family. It could be a bed. terrible family thing. You know what I mean? The whole, maybe the whole family maybe shitty. He just event. keeps going and going and going, you know, like this bad pattern of men that don't know how to go down correctly or whatever. Well, maybe, but then that comes, it comes down to, but then that's what I talk. That's what I mean by you have to want, you have to want to change or you want to become better. Anytime you're doing Learn. something, there's a little this thing like kissing or whether you're going down on someone or, or sex. It's a mutual thing between two people and there's communication. I think you learn to kiss right. with, from the person you're with. You kind of, you, you exactly. connect, you know what I mean? And then it's a because you're both, you know, you don't just barrel in like, ah, 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 ah. and you know, you got There's got to be some sort of, is this working for you? What, what, what would you look, you know what I mean? There's got to be some sort of connection or communication. And that's how you learn. Right. I think that's how you, but you got to want to make the, you got to want to make the difference. There's a rule I always followed. I don't care who you are. The more you brag about how great you are in bed, the shittier yeah. you are in bed. You know, that means you're really bad. You know, you're just not. Totally. I've heard that lots of times. Like this would be the best sex you ever had, and I'm like, eh. I'm, well, yeah, Wait, I'm like, yeah, it was, it was, it was fantastic, huh? A woman said that to you? Oh yeah, I've had. Or a man I've, said no, a woman said that to me. I don't know. No, no, it was all women. It was a woman that said that to me. Yeah, no, there was. And I've it was had. Terrible. A, it was yeah. Most of the and the more that yes, most of the time. I mean, it wasn't terrible. I still had sex, you know, but uh, you know, it wasn't. Uh, yeah wasn't the best you know it wasn't anytime you tell me yeah. it's the best sex you're ever going to have i'm like or oh, be this will be the best blow you've ever had i'm like oh okay and then you're like oh okay All right, it was great it was great thank you and what do you say i don't know what I'm to say i'm so surprised i mean i've heard men saying that but i've never actually well, obviously you've heard men say saying that. that no yeah there's plenty of uh yeah i oh, yeah wow. well i tend to be with women who are a little more outgoing so you know what i mean right but uh, uh, but still, like, I can't imagine, like, I mean, that's great. She's got great self-esteem, but I mean, clearly somebody has been telling her that she's the best sex they've ever had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, but that's such a funny bar to measure because, because uh, like, again, like I said, the sex thing is a mutual, it's a connection thing. It, it has right. to be with the person you're with. It's got to, that's got to work. You can't walk around and go, I'm the best in sex. Everyone says it. That's not, it's ridiculous. Right. You know, there's some people you have a great sex with and you just connect really well with, have had that sex too, where you're with someone and you just nail it. And you're like, fuck, that was, 
like yeah, magic. Yeah, and it you know, was unexpected like, too. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. But it, it's the same. The same as uh, men that are posting, you know, shirtless pictures online. I mean, they just assume that this is how women get excited. That this is what turns them on is the physical. And in fact, it's not. You know, we get turned on by when men stimulate our minds. Right. And I think. I think for a lot of men, it's the same way. I don't know why they think for women, we, we want to see you shirtless and like, okay, let's go. No, not even close. You know, I mean, you all look the same everywhere. Well, so like, who cares? Well, that's the thing. That's also a younger guy thing too. I think that's another thing we were talking about. Uh, what are we talking about? Um, not maturing, but uh, when you get older, when you get, I get older, wiser, right. whatever you want to call it, if you're paying attention, you find out that yeah, the way women are stimulated much more uh, with their minds than they are physically. Just taking off right. your clothes isn't, you know, it's. I'm sure it's fun for you, but it's not the whole. It's not the epic thing. It's not the whole. Yeah, but I, I don't know if it's just a younger guy. I am seeing things from older men. I mean, I had a client in his late fifties who, walking his date to her car, um, tried to you know shove his face into her, her face, his face, his tongue into her face, like and. <laughs> And then he afterwards, he's like, I what, kind of, what kind of clients are you working with over there? Are you, it sounds like all your clients are shitty kissers. Every day, every single one. They're really it's, shitty it's another story um, from a guy. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> Pretty much. But then afterwards he goes, you know, I'm really glad that Julia connected us. You really, you really do have nice tits. I'm like, I never said that. Why, would, why did you say that? And then she called me. She was laughing on the phone. Of course, she never wanted to see him again. Yeah, of, of course. course. Yeah. Uh, but then she goes, that's a weird thing to say, right? And for a man like approaching 60. Like, yeah, that's a very strange thing to say. So I think that I've seen men online posting pictures without shirts that are much older, not yeah. just the young kids. So I don't know. I think it's just people are idiots. You well, yeah, know? some guys don't. Some guys don't. Some guys don't. What's the word? Ever uh, learn? Yeah, some guys don't ever learn, man. Come on, you know that's exactly the truth. Some guys never. You can only tell them so many times. I get it. You look good with no shirt on. Yay! Whatever. <laughs> some don't. And they still post it. Yeah, that's a little. Some should never about. take their shirt off. <laughs> like, take a look at this lady. She's like, hey. First of all, that doesn't belong on Facebook either. Let's keep that off of Facebook. I don't need to be scrolling through my Facebook. Oh, online anywhere. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, I can't even imagine um, are people people are saying. <laughs> no, all right, I'm going back to the board. Well, Keith said even stupid people need love. That's very important. Yes, uh, yes, they do. Rachel said True. something really cool a minute ago, and I just lost it. Hold on, Rachel said two things back oh. to back. She said Rachel, uh, said Rachel Zimmerman is here watching the show. She said, um, "Damn it, I'm trying to remember it. I saw it." She said she'll never. T oh, she won't. Oh, she goes. She met you online. And that she won't text you me? after midnight. Yeah. She met you. She didn't meet me online. Uh -oh. Rachel? Maybe I read it wrong. Take it easy. I'm trying to, I'm sifting through stuff here <laughs> and running the show and I'm editing stuff. It's very confusing right okay, now. Okay, stop it. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can here. We got five minutes too. I got a hard out at seven. This sucks. Oh, I wish we would have more time. Can I, can I have you back on oh, earlier yeah. next time? Can I, be, can I have you on? Please. Let's do it. All right. I'll, we'll bring you back in, in March. I'll bring you back For next sure. month. For sure. It's not like I'm cooking all day long. Let's you know, do, let's night. have you, let's have you back next month and then we can go longer. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> I like the way that sounded. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do that for sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We can go longer. We can go longer. That sounded great to me. Thank I you. can go longer. Can you? Uh, yeah, I can. I can. That's the most action I've had in a year. Um, it's a year. I don't know. It's a year. It's a year. It's been a year. <laughs> a year this week for me. It's a very rough week for me. Wow. Yeah, fucking COVID. Mm. Not great. Uh, Keith said he met you online. Keith said something that almost sounded narcissistic a minute ago. I'm trying to find that. Hold on. He goes. He how is about... a little bit. He's okay. This is what this is what Keith said. I, I know this. He goes. How about this for your female? Yeah. This is totally narcissistic. Okay. Uh, Unless I'm wrong. You tell me. You're the expert. Um, yeah. He goes, uh, how about for your female clients, we can aud audition off a date with me, donate the proceeds to charity and frontline support. That's narcissistic. Am he I correct? He's volunteering his services, you know? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, he, I'm, uh, 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 services. Oh. Uh, his girlfriend seems very nice. So oh. <laughs> Rachel was joking about I said she said, yo, that's what I misread. And it was earlier in the conversation. Remember when I said I said 
Yeah. You said, hey, and I went, hey, lady, or yo, and there was two words. She said, yo. She said, I met you online, yo. It's not funny if you have to explain it 10 minutes later. Sorry, my bad. I no, no, no. <laughs> I <laughs> lost you. <laughs> I let Rachel down. I let her down. I let her down. Uh, okay. That's, I think we're good. Let me see if anything else. Okay, everybody like the video. I don't, I don't see any. Oh, eight, I got a bunch of people watching. Make sure you like the video. But I do have to wrap it up. I do have to get out of here. She's all for it. Keith says you're all for it. Okay, interesting. Um, that sure. would be the, the auction. Yeah, she's uh, printing out flyers right now. Wants to yeah. pimp me out. Now he's he, now he's monopolizing my message board. He wants to pimp. You want to pimp him out? Is that is what? Is he that what really he wants to get out there. He must uh, be uh, bored with the girlfriend or something. Right. <laughs> then you'll be hearing from him again. That I believe. Be yeah, he'll be back on yeah. your site before you know it. He'll be looking for your services. Sure. Uh, Rachel said, "All good." Could she apologizes for me for screwing up her joke? Okay, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> All right, I feel better. All right, we got to roll. Uh, truly, this is awesome. Again, as always, next month for sure. I'll send you a message. We'll figure out a date in mid March, and I won't. I'll make sure I don't yep. have a hard out on the other end, and we'll have more time to talk because uh, we never get a to everything we want. A hard out. I got a hard out. <laughs> hard out at seven. That's what they call <laughs> the business. Else. It's called a hard out. We got a hard out at All seven right. o'clock. I got hey, Lily's got a job. She just got a job. I'm very proud of her. My daughter got a job. Um, give Lily around. So yay, she has a thing at seven awesome. thirty, and job. I'm her trans. I'm her trans. Yeah, well, I'm her transportation. So now I get to be the Uber driver to and from the pizza joint in Burbank. So there we Beautiful. go. Beautiful, Julia. Thank you so much. It. You're the bomb, man. This is fantastic. Have a good. Uh, thank you so much. For yeah, coming. everybody, give Julia a round of applause, man. Anything else? Hey, anything you want to plug before we go? The book, obviously. You mentioned the book. Yes, buy my book. No smiling book. allowed. There is. Do it. There's a link to the Amazon. No There's an Am allowed. That's it. There's an Amazon link already in the bio for the show tonight. You can go there right now and buy it. Purchase her book. You can grab it. Uh, also, go online and uh, follow her website. Go to Matchmaker. Go to uh, MatchByJulia.com. All kinds of stuff. Also, maybe you get lucky. You can get a date with that guy, Keith Yazdestetta, whatever his name is. <laughs> You never yeah. know. He sounds like he'll be in the market for a girlfriend soon. All right. Gets Julia. He's a good looking dude. There you go. All right. Thank well, you, Lucky. All right. Okay. Of course. Bye. Bye. That's Julia. Yay. That was, that was a lot of fun. I'm really mad. I got to go early. All right. I got to go. You guys are great. Thank you so much. You've been the, uh, you, this is a great show. I promise you, Julia will be back next month. We'll have more time. We'll talk about more stuff. We'll talk about her parents some more. Uh, we'll cover a lot of bases. So. There we go. Look at the tables shaking. I got to go. You guys are the best. Thank you very much for being here. As always, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Uh, dream of Pinky. Lenny Schmidt Quarantine Comedy was created, produced, and is hosted by Lenny Schmidt. We live stream on YouTube at 6 p.m. Pacific every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Special episodes occasionally stream or are uploaded on Tuesday and Thursday. Every episode is also launched as a podcast and can be heard on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. If you enjoyed the show, please like the video. If you really like it, share the video. If you really, really like it, please subscribe to the Lenny Schmidt Comedy Channel on YouTube. You'll get updates on this and numerous other online comedy content that my dad produced. Check the info section below for detailed information on all of our guests. If you are a fan, you can follow and support them as well. Go to their page, like their content, buy their albums, purchase a shirt, any merch they may be selling. Anything you do will support performers will literally help save the arts. In fact, if you want to support this show financially, just go to LennySchmidt.com slash if you can or Venmo at Lenny Schmidt Comedy. If you donate as little as $1 or as much as $10,000, it will help pay for the stuff my dad keeps breaking. If you can't pay for the comedy content, that's okay. COVID sucks for all of us. Enjoy the free show. If you want to find a way to support what we do, just subscribe to Lenny Schmidt Comedy Channel on YouTube. That really helps a lot. Thank you for listening to my dad's show. And as always, dream of pinky.